Welcome to Everyday Blue Zone Solutions. I'm your host, Laura Coombs, author of the book, Of Course Your Knees Hurt, and I'm also an online personal trainer. You can find me and the book at ofcourseyourkneeshurt.com. Before we get started, grab the worksheet that goes along with this talk, or if you don't have the worksheet, grab a paper and pencil. I think you'll wanna make some notes as we go along to help you implement what you learned today. I am super excited that you're here and I am so proud of you for taking the time to step into the blue zones with me. So let's dig right in. So why are we here today? Well, I think you're probably here because you're on a mission. You are looking for ways to improve your health, or maybe you're looking for ways to expand your health beyond whatever great stuff you're already doing. Or maybe you want to extend your health span. That's the number of healthy years ahead of you. Or maybe you just want a fresh start on your health journey altogether. So why are you here? Is one of those things your mission? Take a few seconds to ponder that and write it write it down somewhere on your worksheet. I'll give you 20 seconds to come up with your reason for being here today. So the good news is whatever it is that you wrote down, there are so many ways to get there. There's so many ways to do all of these things, whether you're expanding your health or extending your health span or getting a fresh start. And there is information on all of those things absolutely everywhere. And let's face it, that information can get a little bit overwhelming. It can even be frustrating and you might be having a hard time implementing all of that information into the reality of your everyday habits. Finding a sustainable, healthy lifestyle that you can tiptoe into and finally stick to is a great mission. And that's the journey that we're starting together today. So why am I here? Well, I'm here with you guys to discuss down and distill down some of that information. I've made it my mission over my 30 year career in health and fitness to sift through all of the stuff that's out there and bring it to you in simple, manageable chunks that are doable, sensible, and highly impactful. My job as a coach is to help you find ways to make important changes to your health by baby stepping into new habits that give you the biggest possible bang for your buck and your habits that you can stick to. So when I came across the Blue Zones, you guys, the website, the cookbook, the video course, I fell in love and I knew I had to share it with you. So what are the Blue Zones? Well, the Blue Zones are specific geographic regions around the globe where people are living well into their 90s and even their 100s. And they're not just living long, they are truly living well. They are supremely healthy. They're highly resistant to age-related diseases like dementia, cancer, stroke, heart disease, and even arthritis. And they live long, happy lives with a sense of joy purpose, and vigor that we don't typically associate with old age. The five original Blue Zone regions are found in Greece, Italy, Japan, Costa Rica, and even Loma Linda, California. These regions and these people have been studied extensively since 2005, most famously by National Geographic explorer Dan Buettner. So what is the secret to these blue zoners? Well, what the researchers have found is that the blue zones and all of their residents have a few things in common. First, their lifestyle is designed for movement, not the movement like gym memberships or exercise classes or marathons. I might be putting myself out of business here, but their movement is functional, consistent, 
daily movement. For example, they walk instead of drive, they use tools instead of machines, and they actually look for opportunities to add physical work and movement to their day. I don't think elevator or remote control or are even in their vocabulary, let alone kettlebells, right? So the second thing that they have in common is that these cultures prioritize people and families. They prioritize relationships and communities and everyone matters. In fact, in the blue zones, the elderly and the aging process are highly valued and highly honored. That is great news for those of us that are aging. Third, the blue zone mindset is one of gratitude and purpose. Instead of focusing on what they need to do or what they wish they had or how much money they could accumulate, they regularly engage in hobbies, interests, and socializing, along with a dedicated spiritual or religious practice, they've created so many ways to make their days and lives meaningful beyond just their vocation, and they celebrate each of these blessings. And fourth, of course, is food. Food in the Blue Zones is regarded as a necessary, deliberate act of nourishment. And it's not just what they eat, it's how they eat it. As you may have guessed, there are specific foods that seem to support the extraordinary longevity of blue zoners. And I will walk you through those specific foods in another webinar. But today, let's take a look at how they eat in the blue zones, because I think there are some really important, simple shifts we can make here without drastically changing our diet. And that's good news for a lot of us. And these simple steps can help us to baby step our way into our own blue zone. Now, this is where you're gonna to wanna to grab the worksheet or your notebook and start jotting down some actionable solutions that you can implement today. So the first solution is the 80% rule. And it goes like this, eat, until you're 80% full. How very un-American, right? So now you can look at the 80% rule as a spiritual habit, like you're honoring the capacity of your stomach and the labors of your intestines and sparing them the extra work. Or you can also look at the 80% rule as more of a no-nonsense physiological habit. Like, yeah, you're aware of the demands that you're placing on the mechanics and the inner workings of your gut when you constantly fill it to the brim. Either way, try really paying attention to how full you are and stop at 80%. Now, eating until you're stuffed to 100 or 110% has become culturally appropriate in the US and elsewhere. We even have eating contests, fat pants, portions, platters, festivals, and coupons that champion overeating, but not in the blue zones. They naturally stop eating when they are 80% 80 80 full. Now, I know this is going to take some awareness, and you might feel uncomfortably deprived at first, but that one small step to 80% might just change your outcome and change your aging. And for now, I'm not even asking you to change what you're eating. I'm just asking you to be aware of how much. So take a few seconds now to jot down exactly what that might look like for you. Maybe you're going to jot down, wear your skinny pants <laughs> to the dinner table instead of your fat pants. Or maybe you're going to jot down to remind yourself to chew more slowly so that you're not in such a rush to fill up. Or maybe you'll jot down to turn off the TV or your email while you eat so you can really focus on how full you are. Pick something now that you can do to get your 80% and jot it down. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Oh, 
okay. Solution number two is to use smaller plates. So yes, obviously smaller plates go along with stopping at 80%, right? If our plate is 80% smaller, then that's gonna make it a really easy way for us to stop at 80%. And you've probably got some small plates and bowls already in your cupboard. And you've probably even heard this tip before, it's nothing new but are you doing it? That's the question. I want to set you up for success. Make the big plates go away and put the small plates front and center. Maybe you need to reorganize your cupboard to make this happen. Maybe you need to jot that one down. Maybe you need to pick up some small plates at the thrift store or pull some of your small plates out of storage. Jot that one down if you need to. Maybe you need to ask the server at the restaurant to box up half your meal before bringing it to you so that you're not over consuming and filling up to 110% at the restaurant. Maybe that's the one you'll jot down. I know this sounds so simple and you're probably wondering what's so magical about all of this. The point is knowing this stuff and actually doing this stuff are sometimes two very different things. We hear this information, we see the tips on TV or in other meetings that we've attended, but we don't always follow through. So having success with this program or any program really means removing all of the obstacles between you and the action step. So that's why I'm giving you extra time with each of these to really get your action steps on paper today. So take a few seconds and jot down your action steps for using the smaller plates. Solution number three, serve at the countertop and eat at the table. And wouldn't we all like to be eating at this table? How beautiful is that? So in the blue zones, there are no family style platters sitting on the table or worse yet, platters of food sitting on the coffee table in front of the TV. What they do there is they grab their small plate, they fill it at the countertop or at the stove, and then they immediately pack up the leftovers and eat their meals at a beautifully set table. I am so far away from doing this, you guys. The leftover part of it, no problem. I am very good about packing it all up in the Pyrex, but I don't eat at the table. I know that it's best to eat at the table, but I still don't do it and I haven't for years. So when I was putting this webinar together, I thought about that for a minute and I tried to really break it down to why I wasn't eating at the table. What I came up with was I realized that I didn't wanna ruin the glossy black finish on my table. So I eat in the living room on the coffee table instead. This is so, so dumb of me. And to make matters worse, I was eating in the living room with a television on. How can I possibly pay attention to my 80% if I'm watching Netflix? So what I'm going to write in my box here is to pull out the placemats and pull out the table linens that are stashed away for special occasions. And I'm going to properly set my table today to make it more appealing and to remove any excuse about not wanting to wreck the glossy black finish. Now, maybe what you'll write down is that you'll get some Pyrex containers for leftovers, or maybe you'll have to keep your fridge better organized so there's actually room for the leftovers. Think that through for a second and jot down some actionable solution here. I'll give you 20 seconds again. The fourth solution is to share a meal. Now I know, I know, I know, I know. Sharing a meal is really tough right now with COVID, but when you can, however you can, share your time with a friend while you eat. Food takes on a totally different meaning, you guys, and a totally different purpose when it is shared. 
And I hope we can all get back to this very soon. Be sure to use your small plates when you do. And now take 20 seconds to jot down some ideas about who or where or how you can start sharing some meals. The next solution is to pause. One of the ways we can blue zone our day and use food like they do as a necessary deliberate act of nourishment is to simply pause. Take a moment to look at your food. Notice how it looks and be grateful for it and pause. Now take a small bite. Notice the temperature and the texture and the flavor. Pause. Chew slowly. Keep chewing. Taste your food and pause. Now there's a biological reason for all of this pausing and you've heard this before. Aside from the gastrointestinal benefit of pausing and chewing your food so that you don't choke, there's definitely a brain benefit as well. It takes your brain 20 minutes to know that your stomach is full. But knowing about this benefit and actually doing the pausing to extend the duration of your meal for 20 minutes are probably two different things. I know that sometimes you have to eat in a rush, but do you have to eat in a rush all the time? Isn't there some meal you can practice the pause with? Jot it down. Literally list a few meals where you can commit to the pause the noticing, the chewing, the tasting, and the pausing. Maybe that's your breakfast. Maybe that's gonna be a lunch. Maybe that's just a couple days a week at first. But start finding time to honor the pause. Maybe while you're practicing this, you'll set a timer for 20 minutes and challenge yourself to actually take all 20 minutes to complete your meal. This might be a little obsessive and probably not the way they do it in the blue zones, but we might need this at first just to know what 20 minutes really feels like and how much chewing and pausing and noticing and tasting that really requires. What do you need to do to make pausing a daily habit? Jot it down. All right, the last solution is fasting. Now this is not the, compl the complicated, trendy, intermittent fasting program you've seen advertised. This version of fasting is simply not eating for 16 hours each day. So because of math, that means you'd only be eating for eight hours each day. That accomplishes a couple things. First, it probably reduces your total intake of calories each day. For most of us, that's going to be a good thing. Think about the mindless eating you do from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed. How many hours are you currently eating in a day? And how many unnecessary calories are you consuming because of that? Secondly, fasting also gives your stomach and your gut a 16-hour break from turning and churning your food. And that allows them to actually digest and deliver the nutrients to your cells. Think about what a difference that could make to your energy levels, your overall health, your digestion, and your overall uh, longevity. Now think about how hard it is for you to do your job when you're being bombarded with demanding emails and phone calls and notifications all day. Well, that's what you're doing to your digestive system when you eat during every waking hour. 
So fasting gives your body time to digest and deliver. Also, you guys, fasting is so good for your sleep and your stress levels. So if you're struggling with either of those, fasting might be an area for you to really focus on. And finally, fasting is going to make you more aware, more diligent, and more in tune with your food because you are really going to have to do some planning for this eight-hour window to work. So for example, I get up at 6 a.m. and I really like to have my coffee and oatmeal right away. So if I'm eating in an eight-hour window, that means I have to get all my nutrients in by 2 p.m., and then fast until 6 a.m. the next day. And that's just not going to work for me. So I have to be a little bit diligent and plan a little better. What that might look like is starting my day still at 6 a.m. with just plain hot water or some plain green tea, but not actually eating until 9 a.m. That extends my, my eating window until 5 p.m. So that eight hour window is now from nine to five. And this is a lot more reasonable for me. It's definitely going to take some planning though, especially if I have evening clients or especially if I'm running off to do errands early in the morning. So this might not be a 16 hour fast for me right off the bat. I'm currently working with a 12 hour fast and I'm able to do that about five out of seven days. So this might be something that you need to tiptoe into as well, or maybe in the beginning, just allow yourself a few days a week of fasting. Hey, better than not trying at all, right? So for any of these blue zone solutions to work, for you to really increase your longevity and your health span, you need to believe that your daily habits are contributing to your overall health. You are making choices every time you eat about what your outcome is going to be. In fact, 90% of your longevity and health span are determined by your lifestyle, not your genes. So you do have control over this and you can take charge of it. Even if you don't live in Sardinia or Okinawa or Loma Linda, you can take charge of your outcomes. Your everyday actions absolutely have cumulative effects and I am so excited for you to get started. So what's next? Well, you can go to bluezones.com and find tons of great resources. Their website is so beautifully laid out and very, very user-friendly. I would definitely recommend visiting their site and having your worksheet or notebook handy so you can keep adding to your list of everyday solutions. Okay, and speaking of adding, I am adding three more webinars to this Blue Zone series. Today we talked about how to eat, and next time we will talk specifically about what to eat. It's a great next step for you. Good news is a lot of the foods are very delicious and will take this on once you've mastered today's stuff. And to help you master today's stuff, or if you have questions about this or other aspects of your health and fitness, I would totally love to talk to you more. It might be easier than you think to streamline or refresh your current routine, and we can develop an effective, doable plan that makes sense for you and your goals right now. I'm a personal trainer who really does want to get personal, and we can do a quick Zoom call and hash it all out totally free and figure out together what your next best steps might be. My free consultation calendar is on my website, of course, your knees hurt.com, and I would love to see you soon for a consultation or at the next webinar. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you learned something and that you're excited, like I am, to dig in and take charge of the Blue Zones. I am so happy to be on this mission with you.